Hi guys! In this video, we'll be looking at finding displacement in simple harmonic motion, finding displacement in simple harmonic motion example, and then we'll finish with a summary. We're going to think about how we can find displacement in simple harmonic motion. We know that the defining equation for simple harmonic motion relates acceleration to displacement, and the defining equation is acceleration is equal to minus angular frequency squared times displacement. Now we want to think about whether we can find a solution to this equation that relates displacement to time. So how can we relate displacement and time? To do so, we need to think back to the connection between circular motion and simple harmonic motion. We found that the horizontal displacement of a mass in circular motion displays simple harmonic motion. So let's consider uniform circular motion superimposed on a set of axes. The ball moves around the circle with an angular frequency of omega. As it moves along the circle, its displacement along the x-axis is going to change. So here we can see it moving in one direction along the x-axis, along these points here. And then when it begins to trace out the second half of the semicircle, it returns back along the same points. And the motion of the ball along the x-axis is simple harmonic motion. We've also seen that we can find the horizontal displacement using trigonometry. We define the radius of the circle to be equal to r, and the angle between the radius that connects the ball to the origin and the x-axis is called theta. And by using simple trigonometry, we can see that the x-displacement of the ball is equal to r cos theta. And we can also see that the radius of the circle, r, is the amplitude of the oscillation. So the greatest x displacement possible is when the ball is at this position here, and that is equal to the radius of the circle. Knowing this, we can rewrite the displacement in terms of the amplitude. So we can write x is equal to amplitude times cos theta. Now we can also write theta in terms of angular frequency. Recall that the definition of angular frequency omega is that it is equal to the rate of change of angular displacement, which is theta. So we can write that theta is equal to omega times time. And we therefore arrive at the solution for displacement in terms of angular frequency and amplitude, which is that displacement x is equal to amplitude a times cos of angular frequency omega times time. It's important to remember that this equation can only be used for oscillations that begin at maximum displacement. So this means that at time t equals zero, the displacement x must be equal to the amplitude a. For example, if an object oscillates in simple harmonic motion with an amplitude of 0.01 meters and an angular frequency of 3.14 radians per second, what is its displacement after 15 seconds? We use our equation for displacement as x is equal to a times cos of omega times t, and therefore x is equal to the amplitude a, which is 0.01, times cos of angular frequency, which is 3.14, times 15, because we want to look at what happens after a time of 15 seconds. And we find that the displacement x is equal to 0.00742 meters, which is 7.4 times 10 to the minus 3 meters to two significant figures. Let's do a longer example of finding displacement in simple harmonic motion. For example, a mass on a spring is released from its maximum displacement of 10 centimetres. It takes 0.6 seconds to complete one cycle. What is its displacement after 3.2 seconds? So here we have our mass on a spring at its maximum displacement of 10 centimetres. And we want to find its displacement x after a time interval of 3.2 seconds. And we're also told that the time period, big T, is equal to 0.6 seconds. Our first step is to recall and write down the equation for displacement for simple harmonic motion. This is x equals amplitude a times cos of omega times t. And this is little t here, not big T for the period. Now we need to recall the formula for the angular frequency. Angular frequency omega is equal to 2 pi divided by time period t. We can now substitute the period given to find the angular frequency. So omega is equal to 2 pi divided by our time period that we were given, which is 0.6, and we find that omega is equal to pi divided by 0.3 radians per second. And we're going to keep it in this form because we're going to use it in the later calculation. 
Now we need to find the amplitude in SI units. And we're told in the question that amplitude is equal to 10 centimetres, which is equal to 0 0.1 metres. Now we're ready for our final step, which is to substitute the values into the displacement equation. We have that x is equal to amplitude, which is 0 0.1 metres, times cos of angular frequency, which is pi divided by 0 0.3 radians per second. And we want to know what the displacement is after a time of 3.2 seconds. And if we substitute this long expression into our calculators, what we find is that x is equal to minus 0 0.05 metres. And note this minus sign here because we can have positive and negative displacements. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you're looking for an amazing A-level physics resource, join me today in my series of engaging bite-sized video tutorials. Just click the snap of my smiley face and together let's make A-level physics a walk in the park.